Without further ado, I would like to introduce the first speaker for the session, and that is Dr. Sankap Segal. Sankap is a colleague of mine at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, where he is an attending cardiac anesthesiologist and a member of the team who de uh, delivers image guidance to structural heart disease interventions. Sankap will be talking to us this morning about current trans uh, transcatheter mitral valve interventions, the current evidence, and best practice. Sankap, take it away. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Toronto Symposium. My name is Sankalp Segal. I'm a cardiac anesthesiologist at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. And um, today we'll be talking about transcatheter mitral valve interventions, uh, current evidence, and best practice. I have no disclosures. The objectives of our talk today are going to be uh, understanding the need for uh, transcatheter interventions of the mitral valve review transcatheter edge to edge repair techniques for the mitral valve and transcatheter mitral valve replacement therapies for the mitral valve as well uh, by analyzing landmark clinical trials, current evidence uh, and guidelines and uh, review some outcome predictors, compare transcatheter edge to edge repair to uh, valve replacement therapies and uh, a certain optimal uh, patient selection and finally discuss the future perspectives. Now, the need and challenges of transcatheter mitral valve interventions. Uh, Population-based uh, analysis um, have revealed that the prevalence of moderate to severe mitral valve um, disease in the elderly population is very high, about nine to 10%. Uh, mitral valve prolapse is the most common organic mitral valve pathology with a prevalence of uh, roughly 2.5% in all adults. Um, advanced cases of mitral uh, regurgitation um, uh, particularly symptomatic mitral regurgitation are attrib attributable to uh, progressive left ventricular dysfunction, heart failure, and can have an annual uh, mortality rate of up to 35%. Uh, there remains a very high prevalence of untreated uh, mitral regurgitation, uh, mainly primary mitral regurgitation, as only 29% of these patients um, undergo surgery. Um, and the operative mortality risk of mitral valve surgery still remains high. It's somewhere between 1.5 and 4.5% for repair and replacement. The five-year survival after a mitral valve surgery is somewhere between 70 and 80%, and the outcomes are worse for patients with advanced age, uh, female gender, low ejection fraction, uh, presence of diabetes, and obesity. It is estimated that approximately half of all patients with symptomatic severe mitral regurgitation do not receive surgery because of this perceived elevated operative risk. So there remains a big population at large that uh, needs uh, a transcatheter intervention for the mitral valve. The Kaplan-Meier uh, curves here show the uh, life expectancy uh, for up to 10 years after mitral valve repair and replacement. You can see it's worse with valve replacement uh, than with valve repair, and it's somewhere between uh, 70 uh, to 80 percent at five years. Now the challenges uh, for transcatheter mitral valve intervention arise from the fact that no big randomized study um, or studies have really compared the transcatheter interventions to um, either optima, optimal medical therapy or surgical interventions. Uh, so despite increasing uh, scientific data in the last decade, there remains only a small number of patients enrolled in structural heart disease studies uh, that really limits the ability to verify the real clinical impact of these procedures um, on uh, clinical outcomes. So let us first discuss transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair strategies for the mitral valve. There are two main devices currently available for commercial use, uh, Abbott's MitraClip and Edverb's Pascal device. Abbott's MitraClip is the first transcatheter technology with CE mark and FD approval for the treatment of both primary and secondary mitral regurgitation. Since its first implantation in about 2003, over 100,000 procedures have been performed worldwide. The MitraClip system is now widely adopted for mitral edge-to-edge -edge therapy for primary mitral regurgitation at high surgical risk on the basis of Everest, Everest 1, that is Everest 2, and the Everest 2 realism studies. Um, and in patients with uh, secondary mitral regurgitation, um, who remain symptomatic despite guideline-directed uh, medical therapy with uh, non-excessive left ventricular enlargement, uh, 
uh, absence of right ventricular dysfunction or pulmonary hypertension on the basis of the COAP trial results. The COAP study randomized uh, patients, uh, about 600 patients with heart failure and moderate to severe or severe functional mitral regurgitation who remained symptomatic despite guideline-directed medical therapy. It showed sustained three-year improvements in uh, mitral regurgitation severity, quality of life, uh, and functional capacity with the mitral clip compared to uh, guideline-directed uh, medical therapy alone <clears throat> with reduced analyzed rates of heart failure, hospitalization, and mortality. Also, subsequent com uh, composite uh, rate of mortality or heart failure hospitalizations was reduced even for the patients that were assigned to guideline-directed medical therapy alone uh, who crossed over and were treated with uh, a mitral clip edge-to-edge -edge repair when compared to those who continued on guideline-directed medical therapy um, alone. So uh, re-emphasizing the advantage of mitral clip in this patient population. Uh, now the mitral FR trial in 2018 uh, enrolled about 300 patients um, and showed no difference between the two groups in composite uh, outcome of death from any cause or unplanned hospitalization uh, for heart failure at 12 months between edge-to-edge -edge repair uh, with guideline-directed medical therapy or uh, medical therapy alone. Now, this was surprising that there was no reduction in the primary endpoint uh, for um, all-cause mortality or heart failure hospitalizations in this trial, uh, whereas a significant uh, benefit was shown in the COAP trial. Now, this trial actually uh, gave us two lessons. The first uh, lesson we learned is that functional mitral regurgitation uh, should be considered as a leading cause uh, in cardiomyopathy progression rather than a mere marker of disease severity. The second lesson we learned from these two big trials, the COAP and the MITRO FR, uh, which resulted in basically diametrically opposite results, is the subclassification of patients with functional mitral regurgitation into those with proportionate and disproportionate mitral regurgitation. And it has proven very useful in understanding the response to different therapeutic interventions. In proportionate mitral regurgitation, the principal source of MR is the dilation and symmetric tethering um, of the mitral valve leaflets. Um, this is primarily because of left ventricular enlargement. Uh, which produces a classic uh, secondary MR jet. Um, so basically the global LV uh, disease drives the mitral regurgitation. These patients with proportion mitral regurgitation have a very high favorable response, both clinical and hemodynamic uh, response to uh, medical therapy. In marked contrast, uh, disproportionate functional mitral regurgitation typically is associated with a focal uh, left ventricular wall motion abnormality and asymmetric a uh, regurgitant jet um, in a classic rather primary mitral regurgitation pattern. You see those asymmetric jets, uh, eccentric jets, and the degree of mitral regurgitation that cannot be ascribed to uh, global left ventricular dilation. So these ventricles are not severely dilated. These patients have a significant benefit from treatments that are directed towards the valve apparatus itself, that is the mitral valve repair or replacement, and they have a poor response to drugs or devices that are intended to make the left ventricle smaller. Uh, the relationship of effective regurgitant orifice area to the left ventricular end diastolic volume helps define proportionate versus disproportionate mitral regurgitation. So if you have a small EROA with a large end diastolic volume for the left ventricle, that becomes a proportionate mitral regurgitation. If you have a larger EROA with a smaller ventricular size, that becomes a disproportionate mitral regurgitation. Now, most patients in the mitral FR trial have proportionate uh, mitral regurgitation with large dilated ventricles. Um, and thus reduced benefit from edge-to-edge -edge repair, which helps explain the disparity between the results of the trial for mitral FR versus a COAP trial. So how we should approach severe mitral regurgitation patients is by classifying uh, these patients into proportionate versus disproportionate mitral regurgitation after medical optimization, uh, and then considering for uh, transcatheter therapies uh, with repair or replacement versus uh, advanced heart failure therapies um, based on uh, imaging findings. Uh, moving further with the trials, uh, the X-band uh, MitroClip X-band trial uh, is the largest contemporary real-world study of MitroClip uh, uh, NTR and XTR devices that also shows effectiveness with almost 90% reduction in mitral regurgitation uh, at one year and about 65% reduction in hospitalizations from heart failure at one year with really good safety profile and minimum complications, which reinforces the need and the use of this device. From other studies, we have also learned about MitroClip outcome predictors. Um, patients younger than age 75, uh, lower serum creatinine, lower left ventricular end diastolic volume, stable hemodynamics, lack of atrial fibrillation, or COPD, 
um, and low um, cancer uh, quality scoring uh, patients have usually have good outcomes with the mitral procedure. Other sub-studies of the COAP trial have shown that if there is a residual mitral regurgitation following the procedure, uh, anything that is greater than grade three uh, at 30 days is a predictor of mortality, a higher mortality at two years of follow-up. Now, regarding gender-specific impact of uh, uh, transcatheter edge to edge uh, repair of mitral clip uh, in heart failure hospitalization treatment, the benefit was less pronounced in women uh, compared with men beyond the first year of treatment, which is not very well understood. Finally, um, edge to edge repair uh, in comparison to surgical uh, mitral valve uh, repair in uh, post uh, MI patients in a retrospective analysis of roughly 500 patients uh, who had at least moderate to severe uh, mitral regurgitation following MI showed. Um, uh, lower in hospital and one year mortality rates in the patients that were in the transcatheter group. However, the immediate post um, uh, procedural success did not differ between the two groups. Now, unfortunately, if the mitral clip fails, the patients need surgery uh, and there is a dismal outlook. Uh, in the cutting edge registry of uh, over 300 patients, mitral valve surgery after failed uh, edge to edge repair revealed approximately 24% mortality at one year and 32% uh, after three years of surgery. Now, this is primarily driven by the fact that these patients are high surgical risk to begin with, and only less than 10% of patients who had failed edge-to-edge -edge repair underwent a surgical mitral valve repair. Most of them, which is 90% and, and greater, uh, needed a valve replacement, which inherently has a higher mortality risk. Now, the reasons for uh, surgical reintervention amongst these failed um, uh, tier uh, or edge-to-edge -edge repair uh, group uh, was mainly, uh, which is checked on for 40%, um, was recurrent or residual mitral regurgitation. Uh, single leaflet de device attachment uh, accounted for about another 25% of these reoperations. Um, a partial leaflet detachment occurred in about 20%, uh, and mitral valve stenosis uh, in another 10 to 15%. Two retrospective studies also suggest that transcatheter edge to edge repair can be safely performed with moderate conscious sedation using intracardiac echo with same day discharge, which shows that there's a promising evolution um, in, in these transcatheter therapies. Now, the second device to discuss for uh, mitral valve edge to edge repair or the tier technique is a Pascal device from Edwards. It gained the CE mark in uh, February 2019 for the treatment of both primary and secondary MR uh, and is also now FDA approved. Uh, for use in secondary uh, mitral regurgitation as of 2022. Um, under the class two study, um, we have two-year outcomes of uh, over 100 patients which revealed favorable results in both primary and uh, functional mitral regurgitation. Uh, the results showed a high rate of survival, uh, over 70% in functional mitral regurgitation and over 90% in primary MR uh, and high rates of freedom from uh, heart failure hospitalizations of over 80 and 95% in these patients. Transcatheter edge to edge repair now is the standard of care for patients with symptomatic functional mitral regurgitation, despite guideline directed medical therapy without an alternative indication for cardiac surgery, that is, their high surgical risk patients. The 2020 ACCHA guidelines upgraded its use to Class 2A recommendation for select primary mitral regurgitation, while the 2021 European guidelines have given a Class 2B recommendation for its use in primary mitral regurgitation. A new Class 2A recommendation for select use in functional mitral regurgitation patients has been given by both the ACCAHA and the European guidelines. Tens of thousands of patients have now undergone uh, transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair for mitral valve disease with continuously improving 30-day mortality, uh, which averages about 4.5% now and an average length of stay of about one day in the hospital post-procedure. Compared to tier or transcatheter edge to edge repair, the field of valve replacement using transcatheter techniques, which is TMBR, is still in its infancy, mainly limited by high rates of screening failure due to unsuitable anatomy. The two year outcomes um, after the implantation of the tendine valve, which is one of the prominent TMBR valves used, uh, showed a high all cause mortality of about 39%. Uh, however, over 90% of surviving patients had no mitral regurgitation with a decrease in heart failure hospitalization. Hence, it showed great feasibility, uh, but with high, uh, high mortality. Now, I wanted to point out that there are uh, numerous transcatheter mitral valve replacement devices that have previously come on market, uh, which are not currently available and also are in progression and in the pivotal trial phase now. So we'll just be discussing two or three of these, Tendine being the more, uh, the more commonly seen one. 
Another device, the Interpret uh, TMVR valve system with the Medtronic has shown favorable 30-day results in a pivotal study. Uh, the 15 patients enrolled had 100% uh, corrected mitral regurgitation, uh, trace or no paravibrator leak um, from the mitral regurgitation, and excellent valve function, no mortality or stroke, uh, with significant improvement in functional class. Um, and this shows great promise, and we're waiting for uh, more patients to be enrolled and to see long-term durability of this valve. Uh, next, the one-year outcomes were reported from the mitral trial, um, which is evaluating the uh, the transeptal mitral valve and valve with the Sapien 3 uh, uh, transcatheter heart valve in high-risk patients with failed surgical uh, mitral bioprosthesis. Uh, transeptal mitral valve and valve was associated with 100% procedural uh, or technical success rate, uh, low procedural complication rates, and very low mortality, just between 3 and 4% at one month, and about 17% at one year. Now, Sapien 3 is the only approved valve currently in use for uh, failed um, use uh, failed rings by prosthesis or for use in valve and valve in uh, severe MAC cases. In another large study looking at the Sapien valve and TMVRUs uh, of over in over 500 patients, um, there was a high um, adverse event um, uh, rate in these patients. The all cause mortality uh, was between 20 and 23% uh, at one year, uh, which was highest in uh, valve and MAC, uh, followed by valve and ring, followed by valve and valve. As you can see, 30-day mortality was highest in valve and MAC, and also the one-year mortality was highest in the valve and MAC group. Now, when it comes to clinical practice and deciding candidacy uh, for uh, transcatheter repair or replacement, um, the complex pathophysiology of mitral valve disease plays a huge role. Uh, functional mitral regurgitation may pose a heterogeneous anatomical spectrum that may be difficult to treat with uh, current uh, transcatheter repair devices. This is exemplified from the fact that proportionate mitral regurgitation with severely dilated left ventricles, as we discussed, uh, with a severely increased LVEDV, may not benefit much from edge-to-edge -edge repair strategies uh, as compared to medical therapy. And in these cases, if a transcatheter intervention is needed, then a TMVR device may be able to negate this um, uh, heterogeneity and, and, and target numerous anatomical uh, variations. Um, now, other cases where TMVR may be beneficial compared to uh, tear or repair strategies are in patients that are at risk for resulting mitral valve stenosis uh, from an edge-to-edge -edge repair, or in patients who, uh, in whom there is a risk for inadequate reduction of mitral regurgitation uh, uh, expected, or in patients who have anatomic or imaging challenges for an edge-to-edge -edge repair, and also in patients for whom um, uh, a tear would be futile because of cardiac or non-cardiac uh, complications. Further, the long-term durability of transcatheter repair um, remains unknown. Um, now, the TMVR may be the only option available in patients for uh, use as valve and ring, valve and valve, or valve and MAC use, which is a sapient transcatheter heart valve. Uh, some of the advantages, uh, the disadvantages of, of TMVR uh, includes its uh, large profile delivery system, uh, a near complete obliteration of mitral regurgitation, which can cause increased afterload to an already compromised left ventricle, uh, and also anatomic challenges such as left ventricular outflow tract obstruction or a presence of an extremely large mitral annular diameter. Now, in a large recent prospective multicenter single arm observational study called the XPAN study, um, they looked at um, suitability of patients who have been previously deemed a tier unsuitable based on some of these factors that we discussed, which is uh, expected a minimal reduction in uh, MR or anatomic challenges or um, risk of mitral valve stenosis. And they evaluated the use of mitral clip in, uh, for, the, for severe mitral regurgitation in these rather tier unsuitable patients. Uh, the primary effectiveness uh, uh, endpoint in these patients was uh, MR reduction uh, to less than two plus at 30 days. And the study revealed a uh, very um, uh, very significant findings that there was a high implantation success, uh, 96 to 99%, and a significant 30-day reduction uh, reduction in functional class one or two at 30 days. Also, there was significant improvement in quality of life uh, scores in these patients, thus concluding that uh, transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair uh, can be successfully used in, even in complex anatomies <clears throat> and borderline unsuitable patients, but only when performed by experienced operators and high-volume centers uh, as a caveat. Overall, both edge-to-edge -edge repair and replacement strategies continue to be growing 
Uh, the median age for patients uh, in both of these groups is somewhere between 75 and 80, and there's increasing incidence of frailty in these patients. Uh, the 30-day mortality rates overall in these patients um, are uh, between 4.5% for edge-to-edge -edge repair, uh, with the one-year mortality for uh, TMVR dropping somewhere to about 20 to 22%. The minority representation in a lot of these trials and in the uh, large-scale commercial use studies is actually pretty good. Uh, for both this roughly about 80% white population, 9 to 11% black population, and 5 to 7% Hispanic population, representing um, a nationwide population pretty well. Um, so the 30-day mortality rates as they're reducing um, over time, we see that there's there's a decrease in complication and all-cause mortality from these devices. So in the near future, we're going to see continuous increase um, use of these devices. Now, Tier versus surgery, we have a little of evidence from um, two main studies. There's a large meta-analysis of about 21 edge to edge repair and 27 surgical mitral valve repair studies uh, comparing over uh, 3,000 patients in each group. The in-hospital mortality, when you do a head-to-head -head comparison, was significantly lower in the tier group at 3% compared to the surgical group at 5%. Uh, but the one-year mortality did not differ significantly between the two groups. Uh, the New York Heart Association reduction um, and the mitral uh, regurgitation reduction, both were uh, comparable between the two cohorts. Now, this remains a meta-analysis. We don't have a big prospective randomized study. Interestingly, at a late-breaking session during the 2023 uh, European Society of uh, Cardiology Congress meeting last month, uh, in August 23, on valvular heart disease, um, they presented uh, uh, from, from France a nationwide analysis uh, comparing the outcomes following uh, mitral transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair uh, with mitral valve surgery for patients with severe mitral uh, regurgitation. Uh, there were over 57,000 patients who underwent either a tier, isolated tier or isolated valve surgery, and then the propensity matched, uh, score matched these patients. And post-matching, there were roughly 2,000 patients in each group uh, with a mean follow-up uh, of about one year. Uh, interestingly, both the two groups had similar incidence of all-cause mortality. However, uh, cardiovascular deaths were uh, significantly lower in the tier group. It was also interesting that when they uh, looked at the analysis with, um, with patients who had a high Euro score of two greater than four or advanced age greater than 75 years, um, there was a lower all-cause mortality in the tier group, um, concluding that perhaps tier may have benefit over surgical repair in patients who have more comorbidities, higher uh, STS or Euro two, two scores or advanced age greater than 75 years. Now, there are some ongoing clinical trials. Um, the more, most important one is a repair uh, mitral regurgitation trial. It's an open-label randomized study comparing uh, mitral clip and surgical repair for primary mitral regurgitation uh, in older or moderate surgical risk patients. Now, the SUMMIT trial um, is also another ongoing trial. It consists of three arms um, examining treatment with tendine TMVR versus mitral clip in a one-to-one -one ratio, um, a non-randomized cohort with moderate to severe uh, MR treated with the tendine TMBR valve, and uh, the third arm being the mitral analog calcification treated with the tendine TMBR. Uh, they are aiming to enroll about 1,000 patients with a one-year follow-up and the completion due date of uh, 2026. So to summarize uh, everything we just talked about, there is increasing prevalence of mitral regurgitation and untreated MR uh, with increasing morbidity and mortality, and there's a growing need for transcatheter therapies, uh, especially in advanced age and high surgical risk patients. In functional mitral regurgitation, there's complex and dynamic aspects uh, which represent an interplay of the mitral valve apparatus and the left ventricle. Understanding this would help in clinical practice and deciding optimal therapy for our patients. Both edge to edge repair and transcatheter valve replacement offer procedural, high procedural success and low complication rates in a uh, rather high surgical risk population uh, with improving um, endpoints such as heart failure, readmissions, and quality of life. Also, the head-to-head -head comparison of, uh, of repair versus replacement is still lacking. Uh, so um, the long-term uh, durability data uh, of both these devices is something that we will be looking forward to. Uh, finally, patient selection for both repair and replacement strategies is critical. Uh, so what we understand is that the good quality imaging, uh, the timing of intervention, um, and appropriate device selection are really important. Um, again, large-scale studies would be required to compare these uh, different modalities in um, different patient cohorts. Um, 
I hope you all learned from uh, from this talk. Thank you so much uh, for giving me the opportunity.